الحمد لله الحمد لله خالق الوجود من العدم وجاعل النور من الظلم ومخرج الصبر من الألم وملق التوبة على الندم فنشكره على المصائب كما نشكره على النعم ونصلي على رسوله الأكرم ذي الشرف الأشم والنور الأتم والكتاب المحكم وكمال النبيين والخاتم سيد ولد آدم الذي بشر به عيسى بن مريم ودعا لبعثته إبراهيم عليه السلام حين كان يرفع قواعد بيت الله المحرم فصلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى أتباعه خير الأمم الذين بارك الله بهم كافة الناس العرب منهم والعجم فالحمد لله الذي لم يتخذ ولدا ولم يكن له شريك في الملك ولم يكن له شريك في الملك ولم يكن له ولي من الذل وكبره تكبيرا الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا والحمد لله الذي نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله أرسله الله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا فصلى الله عليه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار قال الله عز وجل في كتابه الكريم بعد أن أقول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون ويقول الله عز وجل شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان عباد الله This is the last Friday of the month of Sha'ban Soon a noble guest will arrive It is a season of trade Yes A season of trading with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان The month of Ramadan in which was revealed the Quran a guidance for the people and a clear, and clear proofs of guidance and criterion In Ramadan rewards are multiplied ranks are elevated misdeeds are forgiven sins and bad habits or sins and bad deeds are expiated and people are freed from the fire reaching the noble month of Ramadan itself is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there are those who have been there are those who have passed and moved from the world of deeds to the world of recompense how many people do we know who fasted last Ramadan and did not reach this Ramadan and some will not reach this Ramadan even if it's two days remaining now may Allah grant us the chance to witness this Ramadan and fasted and accepted from us Ameen Ya Rabb they are now in their graves with their deeds they all wish that they could return to this worldly life not to accumulate wealth or enjoy its fleeting pleasures but rather to stock up on the provisions of taqwa Allah consciousness it is as if we just did it is as if we just bid farewell to the last Ramadan and here we are welcoming this year's Ramadan glory be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how quickly the nights and days pass and similarly this is how quickly life passes in this gathering we are of different ages but share one thing in common we all see what we all see that what has passed of our lives as if it was a dream know that what remains of your life will pass with the same speed as what has gone by and death will surprise and death will surprise you in an instant then you will wish if you could return to this world to do good but life is one single opportunity and life is one single opportunity that cannot be repeated whoever succeeded or whoever succeeds in this test has indeed achieved the great and true happiness and whoever fails this test and waste their life in diversions and heedlessness will regret the will regret and remorse 
in the day of Qiyamah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, حتى إذا جاء أحدهم الموت قال رب ارجعون لعلي أعمل صالحا فيما تركت كلا إنها كلمة هو قائلها ومن ورائهم برزخ إلى يوم يبعثون For such is the state of, is the state of disbelievers until, then, until when death comes to one of them he says My Lord send me back that I might do righteousness in that which I left behind no, it is only a word he is saying and behind them is a barrier until the day they are resurrected. There is a barrier that comes between a person, who, a person who is alive and a person who dies. When a person goes to their grave, there is a barrier that the barrier will not be lifted until the, end of the day of Qiyamah. And that, and that barrier is that they cannot do deeds, but they are in a state of recompense. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us husn al khatima. Ameen. Indeed, the month of Ramadan is a great opportunity of re, uh, is a great opportunity for repenting and a great and a great opportunity for returning and, and turning to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. A great opportunity for self accountability and to make up for what remains of life. A great opportunity to stock up on the provision of taqwa, Allah consciousness. So, a Muslim should be keen to organize their time in Ramadan and to make a pact with themselves to not let a day of the month pass without them doing good that they will be pleased with on the day that they meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they, and they must internalize that Ramadan may be the, that, that this Ramadan may be the last Ramadan, uh, that, that, that this Ramadan may be the last one that they observe. A Muslim should be keen to lighten their load of worldly engagements during Ramadan so that they may be devoted themselves or so that they may devote themselves to worship for indeed the engagements of this world never end one of the things that distract a lot of muslims us all in the past of, in the past ramadans that we gone through you will see closely you get distracted with social medias we get distracted with tv with watching the tvs and all that Someone gives an, uh, a reason that I'm just taking a break, I'm done with work, I just want to spend some time. So we end up wasting our time, rather than doing the good deeds that we have to be doing in Ramadan, we waste it in social media. You might not be that busy in, uh, at work sometimes. Rather than opening your Quran or opening an app of Quran in your phone, you'll see directly people are going to TikTok and Instagram and so on and so forth. Ask yourself, what if this is the last Ramadan that you will witness? Is, it how, is this how you want to spend your Ramadan while knowing that this Ramadan comes every year to cleanse ourselves, for us to cleanse ourselves? We have the whole year from the last Ramadan until today. How many sins have we committed? We are all sinners. Every son of Adam is a sinner and the best amongst those who are sinning are those who, who whenever they sin they repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let's utilize this time to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness life is short you have this Ramadan if you get the chance to witness this Ramadan make this Ramadan be the best Ramadan ever from the uh, make, make this Ramadan be the best Ramadan from the Ramadans that you've gone through in the past Indeed, among the greatest wisdoms of the enjoyment of fasting is achieving consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu kutiba alaykum as-siyamu kama kutiba ala al-ladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. O you who believed, decreed upon you is fasting as it was decreed upon those before you that you may become righteous. So now already you know Ramadan comes to change our lives. To make, us, to make us be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To make us be righteous. We have a lot of things happening in Ramadan. And this is a habit that I always advise my beloved ones. See, you might see a person ha who had a different life before Ramadan. They were dwelling in sins. They used to do all types of sins. Maybe they were not dressing appropriately. Maybe they were drinking. Maybe they were chewing or maybe even smoking so on and so forth when it comes Ramadan you see them trying to change don't point fingers at them don't say well, Muslim wa Ramadan. they use this word and I really really hate this word people have to be very careful do not be a helper of shaitan while shaitan is in chains so you're doing the work of shaitan so when you see a person trying however the life was before Ramadan don't be that person who's going to 
make them, like, who is going to break their morale of trying to be better Muslims in Ramadan. Actually be their support. If you see them trying something good, try doing it with them. They're trying to go for Taraweeh, or maybe they're saying they want to go for Taraweeh. Give them a lift, go with them together, do something together, so that you can also uh, build what you call your Iman together in this Ramadan. And asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant you the chance to be together in Jannah al-Firdaus tomorrow, inshallah, in the day of Qiyamah. The most prominent fruit of fasting is achieving taqwa of Allah, of Allah, Allah Azza wa Jal, consciousness of Allah. So whoever fasting, halfway. so whoever's fasting does not achieve this fruit should take a hard look inside themselves. Taqwa, consciousness of Allah, including performing acts of obedience and refraining from prohibitions, from the prohibitions. Therefore, the Muslim's condition in Ramadan should be better than the condition before Ramadan. Don't feel shy of being a better Muslim in Ramadan. Don't feel shy wearing or dressing properly in Ramadan. Don't feel shy being seen so much in the masjid. Don't care about what people will see or what will, what, what will they see about you or what they think about you. Do it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do it for yourself. It's your life. Tomorrow if you pass away, when you're taken to your grave, you go alone, you don't go with anyone. So work for your akhirah. If Ramadan comes and it changes you, thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you're becoming, you're becoming closer to him in, in, in Ramadan. That is a very big blessing. Some of, I remember there was a case once, uh, some years back, a Muslim family, uh, I remember, I think it was in Mombasa, someone was telling me, and he witnessed it himself. He used to deal with internet connections. So he used to go and connect internet in people, uh, into people's homes and all that. He told me that lunchtime in Ramadan, one day he was entering the house to fix the internet. The whole family is sitting as if it's a normal day they're having lunch. That is the sad state that we have reached. Up. And so many Muslims, you might see, or you might not know, they continue eating as if it's a normal day in Ramadan. Be very careful. Ramadan, if you really want to be a better Muslim in Ramadan, you have to sit down and learn what Ramadan is. In Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives people's sins. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes out people from hellfire who are ordained to enter hellfire. It's a time in Ramadan, there is a night that is better than a thousand months. But we don't know this month. And the good thing about it, for a Muslim, if you do not know this, this Afwan, if you do not know this night, Afwan, if you do not know this night, which is the night of Laylatul Qadr, you strive more, you push yourself more to do more ibadah. Because you do not know that night, so you're in a suspense, you're living in a suspense, in a dilemma, you feel like, I want to get Laylatul Qadr, so how or what should I do so that I get this Laylatul Qadr and it doesn't pass me through without me doing the righteous deeds that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants me to do. A night, if you get that night while you're doing ibadah, imagine you're, you're getting the accounts of, uh, of your ibadahs in the day of Qiyamah that you did ibadahs for a thousand months because of that one night. So do not waste your time. And the values of goodness are many and varied, but what is emphasized is what has been obligated. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Hadith al-Qudsi, وَمَا تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي بِشَيْءٍ أَحَبَّ إِلَيَّ مِمَّا افْتَرَضْتُهُ عَلِيهِ وَلَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِي يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِ الْحَتَّى أُحِبَّهُ And my servant, and my servant does not draw near, near to me with anything more love to me than the religious duties that I have obligated upon him. And my servant continues to draw near to me with, naf, with nafila, superregatory deeds, until I love him. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you, you are you're successful in this world and in akhir. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves his servant, he calls Jibreel and tells Jibreel, I love so and so and I order you all to love him. Jibreel goes to other malaika and tells them to love so and so because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves his specific servant. After that, you will naturally feel that people are loving you, righteous people, huh? be careful. You might see people who are not righteous, they don't love you. You don't need their love. You need the love of people who are righteous. If you get the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what else do you need in this world? Everything else become, becomes useless because you know you've, get the, you've, got the, you've got the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will find success in this world. You'll find happiness. You'll find tranquility. You'll find peace. You will feel that 
staying away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is stressing. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying here. By staying away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala itself, the feeling of that, I feel I'm not, not close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that itself will stress you. So what will happen? You naturally will have an instinct in you that you want to be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by doing all sorts of ibadahs. The Muslim must first, take, must, must first take care of observing the obligatory duties, then after that increase, increase in the voluntary acts of worship. Don't be like the one who is waking up for tahajjud and leaving the fard salah. Fard comes first. Make sure if you were not following up with your salahs properly, you're not praying your salahs properly before Ramadan, when Ramadan comes, you stick onto your salah, your fard salah on time, with jama'ah if it's for the male, for the females they have to, they, they try their best to pray at home on time and then after that you add up slowly step by step. For example, if you were not reciting Quran before Ramadan, constantly. When Ramadan comes, do not start with three juzu. Please, I advise you don't do that. Don't immediately start with three juz. Never do that. Because you will start the first day, the second day, and then the third day you will go back to maybe even suffer, zero. You will not recite. And then at the end of the time, you'll see Ramadan passes through, you'll see you've reached the 29th, and you have just recited four juzus the whole of Ramadan. Start slowly. Go gradually. If you are not reciting constantly before Ramadan, start with half a juz. Then the next day, add up quarter a juzu, or another half. Sto slowly, step by step, you get to a position or you get to a point where you can recite four or five juzus in one day. But that doesn't happen in one day. You have to go, you have to go to, or you have to reach, to, you have to go to that, or you have to aim uh, on to, uh, to that, uh, what do you call, um, uh, goal. You have to go to it gradually. If you go with three, four juzus at once, trust me, you will not finish the whole of Quran at the end of Ramadan. But if you were used to reciting Quran constantly before Ramadan, then Ramadan is just, will just be easy for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَن لَمْ يَدْعَ قَوْلِ الزُّورِ وَالْعَمَلُ بِهِ فَلَيْسَ لِلَّهِ حَاجَةً فِي أَنْ يَدْعَ طَعَامَهُ وَشَرَابًا Be careful also. Whoever does not give up false speech and acting upon it, Allah is not in need of, their, of, of, of his leaving his food and drinks. Rawahul Bukhari. Be careful with what you utter. Be careful with your tongue. Don't waste your time in backbiting others. Be careful. Spend your time in masjid if you have nothing to do at home. The Sahabas, uh, in a riwayah of Abu Huray, uh, about Abu Huraira and his uh, uh, and his companions uh, and his Sahabiyah, the Sahabas, other Sahabas, they used to spend most of their times in Ramadan in the masjid. Why? Because they did not want to backbite each other. They did not want to fall into any types of sins. When you sit in the mosque, it's hard for you to open up any type of social medias, right or wrong. You will feel ashamed of doing any type of sins while you're inside the masjid. If you have nothing to do at home, spend your time in masjid. The masajids are not closed, I'm sure. You can spend your time here. You can look for a place where a masjid you love. Spend your time there if you have nothing to do at home. Read as much as Quran you can. If you feel like you're, you want to rest a little bit, do adhkar or maybe even rest in the masjid. This place has barakah. Sit in gatherings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned in, in a hadith that is sahih. Uh, when you sit in gatherings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned in the malaika come they cover you people and then they ask for forgiveness for you people and ask for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy comes upon you when you see this drus don't finish salah and leave immediately if you have nothing to do sit and listen to the drus after after dhuhr maybe if you have programs in this masjid or any other masjid that you will be in the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in another hadith man sama ramadana iman wa ihtisaba ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhanbi whoever fasts ramadan out of faith and anticipation of the reward he will be forgiven of his previous sins rawahu al bukhari in this manner the fasting the fasting person trains themselves to leave sins and to perform acts of obedience in the school of fasting which lasts for 30 days 30 days is more than enough time to acquire new good habits and lose bad habits so a Muslim should be keen to make the most of Ramadan and acquire good deeds and have a good habits and rid themselves from bad habits. أقول ما تسمعون واستغفر الله لي ولكم من كل ذنب فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم وهو البر الكريم. الحمد لله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله. 
ارسله الله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا my dear brothers and sisters before i go off i want to mention some points before i finish my khutbah part of the points that i have is forgiveness and reward in ramadan abu hurair radiyallahu anhu mentions in a hadith that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said man sama ramadan imanan wa ihtisaba ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhanbihi wa man qama laylat al qadr imanan wa ihtisaba ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhanbihi whoever fasts the month of ramadan due to faith and seeking forgive and seeking reward his previous sins will be forgiven whoever stands in prayer during night of the night of degree decree which is the night of Laylat al-Qadr due to faith and seeking reward his previous sins will be forgiven and in another hadith Abu Hurair radiallahu anhu reports the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says man qama ramadana imanan wa ihtisaba ghufira lahu ma taqaddam min dhanbi whoever stands in prayer during Ramadan due to faith and seeking reward his previous sins will be forgiven for you to be able to work pro out for you to be able to be more productive in Ramadan set for yourself a timetable write down the goals that you want to achieve in this Ramadan as the way you have timetables for your classes when you are in university or in school or if you have timetables set up for you and at work from 4 to 5 from 5 to 6 that way set for yourself timetables of what you should do for every hour in Ramadan that way you'll be able to achieve your goals so from 4 to 5 if you set up for yourself that you want to have you want to be you want to be praying tahajjud and reciting Quran stick up to stick with it after Fajr you have another goal that you've set for yourself from from after Salah until Salah, uh, the two rakahs of Ishraq, the time of Ishraq, you have a certain deed that you want to come up with. Let's say if it's Adkar, if it's reciting a specific surah or reciting your daily uh, portion of Quran, that's the time you have to use it to the most of your ability. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves a person who, is, who does something, even if it's little, but const constantly or continuously. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the best in this dunya and akhirah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the chance to witness Ramadan and fast it. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all our loved ones who have passed away and have not get, uh, did not get the chance to, to witness this Ramadan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those who will reach Ramadan and make the most of it. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is hearing and answering. Hada wa sallu wa sallimu ala nabiyyikum kama amarakum bithalika rabbukum faqal inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi ya ayuhal ladhina amanu sallu alihi wa sallimu taslima. اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك لنا فيما أعطيت وقنا شر ما قضيت فإنك تقضي ولا يقضى عليك نستغفرك اللهم ونتوب إليك اللهم بلغنا رمضان اللهم بلغنا رمضان اللهم بلغنا رمضان اللهم بلغنا رمضان اللهم تقبل صيامنا وركوعنا وسجودنا وتوبتنا 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 اللهم اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف الرحيم اللهم إنا نسألك من الخير كله عاجله وآجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم ونعوذ بك من النار ونعوذ بك من الشر كله عاجله وآجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم اللهم إنا نسألك من من خير ما سألك عبدك ونبيك ونعوذ بك من شر ما ما عاذ به عبدك ونبيك اللهم إنا نسألك الجنة وما قرب إليها من قول أو عمل ونعوذ بك من النار وما قرب إليها من قول أو عمل عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة